This video is sponsored by EA and contains an advert for Battlefield 2042, which is launching today. And for those of you who might not know, the game is set in the near future of 2042, where extreme weather events and resource conflicts have shifted the balance of global power. One of the most exciting parts of the game is the cutting edge arsenal you have at your disposal with a full roster of cutting edge weapons, vehicles and gadgets. EA have challenged me to recreate the Ranger, an autonomous quadruped assault robot featuring in the new game. As regular viewers know, I love a robot dog project, so I'm going to adapt to my Open Dog version 3 to try and recreate the Ranger. Stay tuned for the brand new features that I'm adding and the full reveal of the finished product at the end of the video. I've got two 3D printed ends and two carbon fibre tubes and those fit together to make a rack that's going to fit on the top of the existing dog chassis. I'm aligning these and super gluing them on and I've got super glue with the activator so I can make it go off really quick so I can align it and get them in exactly the right place. Let's just do a quick alignment test and we can see that fits nicely on top of the existing dog chassis to the carbon fibre tubes. Eventually I'll zip tie it on so it doesn't fall off when the dog walks but for now that looks good. The mechanism itself is going to be driven by two robotic servos, so I've got two fairly chunky servos which fit into my other 3D printed parts. So I've got some blocks on the side there with screw holes so that we can bolt the servos in place. And I'm using the provided M2 bolts. So now that servo should fit so the axis of the servo is right in the middle of my rotary part of the print. There's a bearing in the recess in the top of the black part sandwiched in between the black and the red part and the red part is screwed to the servo horn with the provided screws. So that makes a sturdy mount that should hold everything in place if the dog wobbles around a lot when it walks. So let's do a quick test and we can see that that rotates and this servo will actually do 360 degrees. The next stage is the other servo and another similar bearing so that we can mount this stage on the previous red stage to make the second axis. With both stages assembled we can fit that onto the rack which fits on top of the dog and we can see at least the first stage rotates freely with no obstructions. There's a bit of flex in those carbon fibre rods but I don't think it will be an issue once it's attached to the top of the dog. So now we're on to the rest of the second axis which is going to hold a foam dart gun. I've printed these parts in different orientations so when they're put together and glued and screwed it makes a super strong hub to go onto that second servo. I keyed the sides that get glued together and glued them with super glue and then put a bunch of screws in and this part's going to hold the foam dart gun. I've mounted a normal RC servo and that's going to pull the trigger via a spring. So now we have both axes assembled we can see that that moves freely in pan and in tilt or pitch and yaw if you'd rather call it that. This whole unit's got its own controller which is an Arduino Mega and I've got the NRF2401 radio chip there so we can receive data from the remotes and I've got the servo control shield on there as well. So let's give that a quick test, we're just going to put that in manual mode and now I can drive it around with the two joysticks. And that seems to move pretty freely. I do have some motion smoothing in here and I've talked about that quite a bit in my channel. So I'm pretty happy with the range of motion that we get there, at least in manual mode, but the plan is to make some autonomous functions as well. On the bottom of that unit I've got a big 5 volt regulator and also a relay which is going to get triggered remotely to turn on the motor in the foam dart gun. That 5 volt regulator is actually for driving a Jetson Nano so I've got another 5 volt regulator next to the foam dart gun which is to drive the servo and the motors and that whole thing gets switched on remotely by the relay. I've made a cover that goes over there to hide all the messy wires. 
So now I have full manual control over the whole mechanism, I decided to put the controls all onto one joystick, which is a three axis joystick, so that I have a free thumb left to actually press the fire button. And that seems to work pretty well. Here's my Nvidia Jetson Nano, and that's powered by the other big 5 volt regulator on the bottom. I've used a USB to serial interface so that I can send data to the Arduino and interface to it. I'm using the tools and scripts provided by Nvidia so that I can train a deep learning model to recognise a specific target. I'm displaying the pictures I took on my laptop and then I'm using a USB HDMI in device on the Jetson Nano so that I can go through each image and highlight the target. Nvidia provide training scripts so we can retrain an existing deep learning model using transfer learning because it already knows how to recognise objects so we just need to put a couple of extra images in there. So now it recognises the target and we can send the data over the serial interface to the Arduino Mega to autonomously control our pan and tilt mechanism and always try and keep that target in the centre. If it doesn't detect the target it stops but otherwise it will try and move the two servos. And of course we can work out when the foam dart gun is pointing in the middle of the target and make it autonomously fire. So that seems to be pretty accurate. It should stop once the target's been knocked down because it doesn't detect anything, but if you're not quick then it'll still shoot another bullet. On my remote I've got several switches including enabling the dog motors, enabling the turret in manual mode and also enabling the turret in auto mode. There's a cover over the top of the Jetson and the Arduino and that's got two switches. The first one puts it into turret mode and the other one actually turns the radio device into a transmitter so we can use machine vision to actually control the dog. So now that replaces the remote control so depending on where I put the target and how big it is, it will make the dog walk in different directions. So if I go further away, it should walk forwards towards the target. If I go closer, then it will walk backwards. And if I go side to side, then it should turn sideways. And that means we can attach the target to a person and have the dog follow them around. Most of the main functions are built now and of course the same remote controls the dog and the turret which means I can pose the dog and move the turret simultaneously by enabling both functions. But it doesn't look very much like it belongs on the battlefield so I think we need to militarise it. I'm pretty happy with the look of that and it certainly looks a lot more menacing. All of the functions still work and nothing's really restricted by the camouflage, so I guess it's time to go and shoot down some targets.
All I need to do is position the dog in roughly the right position so the camera can see one of the targets in front of it. Then just flip it into auto targeting mode and it should shoot down the target. Well that's a hit, but let's turn around and look at that much smaller target in the middle. Well, pretty accurate so far, and now there's just one last target to shoot. So I'm just going to move the dog around a bit and sidestep a bit so we're in front of it, and then we'll just flip it into autonomous mode again and see if it can shoot it down. The dog has a high quality camera as well as the machine vision camera on board so now we can see what it looks like from the dog's point of view. So we can see those targets getting detected and fortunately my high quality camera has motion smoothing so we don't get too much shake as the dog walks around. Well I think that went right through the gap in the cups on the bottom row there but it will keep shooting until the target's gone. But we seem to be out of darts so just going to quickly refill and then we'll switch that back to autonomous mode and it should go again. So shooting a bit low sometimes the darts get stuck in the barrel of the gun and they don't go as far so we'll have another go at that one. In Battlefield 2042 you can drop Ranger behind enemy lines to use it for recon. So I've attached a phone to my remote with a bracket so now I can see through the high quality camera and I can do everything with FPV. So let's see if I'm any better at shooting those targets manually. Well the first target is quite big so that was an easy one and I didn't actually hit the target. So let's try the second one that's a lot smaller. A little bit low, let's try a bit higher and a little bit higher. Well I hit it, it didn't knock it down but I'm going to give myself that one. Let's try the extra cup on top of the mannequin head. Well it's like he's got his helmet on. I tried this about five times which is why there's a camera cut and eventually I managed to knock it off. So now we can try for the final target. A little bit low. Wow that went through the gap in the cups again on the bottom row. Should be able to hit it this time. Yep there we go good enough for me. So now it's time to test follow me mode but there's not enough space in my house so I'm going to go out in the garden for this one. I'm pretty sure the dog will handle the grass okay although the ground's not flat and there's quite a few lumps and bumps. But it seems to be coping okay so far. So remember I can move the target further and closer to the dog to make it go backwards and forwards. In the middle it will stop and if I move left and right it should turn. All of those functions will mix together as well so it can walk forward or backwards and turn at the same time depending on where the target is located in its field of view. The field of view is not that wide though so I do need to be careful to keep it in shot. But it seems to be working not too badly and if the dog slips in the grass then it seems to compensate okay so far.
Don't forget that Battlefield 2042 is out now, so check it out if you want to have a go with the Ranger. Let me know in the comments how you think my Ranger compares to those in the game. Check out the link in the video description below for more information on the game, and see you on the battlefield.